Welcome to our Thursday night travel talk. Tonight, our special guest is Leanne Hill from Royal Caribbean. Everyone is on the call is muted. You do have control of your video if you'd like to have it on. We'd love to see your face. We don't care if you're in, in your pajamas. So if you feel comfortable, turn your camera on. There is a chat feature. And if you have any questions, type them in the chat and we'll answer them after the presentation. So my name is Lisa Antflick and I'm one of the consultants at Expedia Cruises. Our travel talks are being hosted by the six Expedia Cruises locations in the Edmonton area. Hard to believe it's been two years since March 2020 when the world changed. I know if you're on this call, you enjoy traveling. Travel fulfills us, that's why we do it. And if you're like me, you're missing it. At this time, we are all concerned about safety and health. Over the past few weeks, we're seeing COVID numbers dropping, restrictions being lifted. People are choosing to travel and cruising is one of the safest ways to travel. Cruises have been sailing safely since July last year with the highest levels of COVID mitigation in any industry. The cruise industry is leading the way with stringent health and safety measures, such as incorporating testing, vaccines, screening, sanitization, enhanced ventilate, ventilation, mask wearing, physical distancing, all the other proven health measures that are facilitating a responsible return to safety. In January, I personally went on a cruise and I can tell you, I was so thrilled to get back on the water. I felt totally, totally safe on the ship, probably safer than I did in, in Edmonton. I think the week that I left, the positivity rate in Alberta was 40% and the positivity rate on ships is being less than 1%. So that said, there is a difference between traveling and planning your future travel. If you feel comfortable traveling now, that's great. Give us a call. We'll help you get started. If you're not feeling tra comfortable traveling, that's okay. But I will tell you it is the right time, always the right time to plan. Studies have shown that approximately 40% of the pleasure of a trip coming, sorry, pleasure of planning a trip or of a trip comes from planning it. At Expedia Cruises, we've had many, many passengers that have sailed, come, came back, absolutely loving the experience. I can say that travel is a little bit more complicated now. Now more than ever, the professional advice of a travel consultant is, is needed. And our consultants are here to help you step through every single one of the complexities of travel, make sure your vacation is safe and seamless. When you think about booking on your own, I think, you know, it's not something you want to do in the same way as I don't believe in doing my own taxes. I want to have a professional. When you book with Expedia Cruises and a travel agent, you're going to get the following. You're going to get expertise. There are hundreds of different cruise lines and cruise ships, and only a travel agent can help plan the right one for you. You're never going to pay any more booking directly with the cruise line. You'll usually get better pricing from us. We also have what we call Expedia extras. We block group space on many, many sailings and can offer you amenities such as shipboard credits. The things that get booking directly with the cruise line will not give you. We also have the most up-to-date information in terms of passports, entry requirement, COVID requirements. We're also here to assist you with any emergencies if they happen. At Expedia Cruises, we are committed to finding you the best value for your travel dollars. We are called Expedia Cruises Air, Land and Sea Vacation, so we can help you with all your plans, your, your flights, your transfers, your hotels, your uh, tours, etc. We are your one-stop shop and most important, we are local and I think all of us really wanted to support local. In the past two years, Many of us have not traveled and we've missed it. And I can tell you that the bucket list has now become the to-do list. We have missed time with our friends, with our families, with our spouses. It's time to start traveling again. So whatever your dreams are at Expedia Cruises, we can help make them come true. So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to our special guest, Leanne Hill from Royal Caribbean. Sit back, relax, and let's hear about the world of Royal Caribbean. Thank you so much, Leanne. Welcome. Thank you, Lisa. I'm just going to share my screen here. Can everyone see that? Just, okay, perfect. <laughs> 
So like Lisa said, I'm Leanne Hill. I'm the strategic account manager um, for Western Canada. I'm actually based here in North Vancouver and it is the weather here is really nice too. It's not raining for once. So I'm super happy and it's sunny out. Um, but tonight I'm just going to go through everything that's, you know, all things that are new at Royal. I'm going to create excitement, hopefully um, show you some really great itineraries. I'm not going to focus so much on, um, you know, the protocols and that kind of thing that we have on our ships, um, but I will definitely, I will touch on it throughout, but we're going to talk more about the fun stuff and the exciting stuff and getting you guys back to traveling again. Um, that's what's important to us. So just some numbers um, to showcase here, and th these are from probably a month ago or over a month ago, so these have obviously increased since, but we are back and we're back and we're bold. We're, we've come 21 ships back um, at sea right now. We've had over more than 1 million guests have sailed since our return to um, sailing. We're visiting, we visited 146 ports. You can just see the numbers. And that's just a testament to how great our protocol, the safety protocols um, and keeping everyone on board safe, the crew, the passengers, um, that we were able to continue to sail. Um, even throughout, even now, um, as COVID continues, we are, because of the protocols on the ships that we are, we're able to sail and safely travel. So we're really proud of these numbers. So at Royal Caribbean, there's three things that we, we focus on the customer. That's our main, main focus. We want to make sure that you guys explore the world. Um, so just in terms of offering many destinations all around the world. Um, we want to inspire adventure and we want to deliver world-class service. So those are our main goals for you guys. Another thing that we're really, really proud of, and these just came out a few months ago, but for 19 years running, we have been voted the best cruise line overall and the best cruise line in the Caribbean. Um, one, we've won obviously multiple other awards as well. Um, the Symphony of the Seas voted the best cruise ship. Uh, best sales and service, best private island, perfect day at Coco Cay, which I'll touch on also in the um, presentation. Okay, so like I said, we want to deliver great vacations. We want to make sure that you guys are our number one focus, that your vacation is the best vacation um, of your life. Uh, you come back, you rave about it, you talk about it, and you continue to travel with us. Um, we have two destinations that we are Royal Caribbean specific. We own these um, two islands. Again, I'll touch on this in the presentation. We make sure that our fleet is always modernized. So even our older ships, I wouldn't say they're old um, because we re-amplify them. Uh, they are pretty much brand new. So we're always keeping up to date on making sure that our, our ships are clean and they're current, they're modern, um, and just making a great experience for you. The icon of the seas, uh, I just stuck in here. This, So this class, I'll talk about the classes, but this will be our new class of ship coming in 2023. And I honestly can't even tell you anything about this ship because they won't even tell us. Um, it's a super mystery. The features, anything they, they're having on board, it's it's hush hush. Um, so it just means that it's probably going to be really, really good. But these ships are going to be the biggest ships in the world. So stay tuned for more on those. And like I said, we have the most innovative ships at sea. Um, so again, with the Icon class, I'm super excited just because um, it's gonna it's gonna be literally the most innovative ship at sea. So our technology, um, and again, I just want to touch on a couple of these things. But when you guys travel with us, you can download the Royal Caribbean app on your phone. You won't be able to actually use the app until you're on the ship. Um, however, when you do get your booking number, you can you can put it into the app, and it will allow you to do a lot of the the check-in, um, sort of the pre-cruise stuff that you normally would have to do when you got to the pier. So it's going to eliminate a lot of just the waiting around at the pier, you know, putting your credit, getting your credit card, getting your room key, all that kind of stuff. Um, at the bottom, it says the Terminal A, the port in Miami. This is probably one of the most efficient ports um, I have been in. It's so fast. Uh, you're probably literally from the, they say it's car to bar in 15 minutes, and that's exactly what it is. By the time that we got onto the ship, um, and we were probably, it was probably 10 to 15 minutes. And that was even when we had to show all the COVID stuff. So um, it's not like before where you're waiting in lines and you're having to, you know, show your credit card and you have to get your room key. All your, all your um, stateroom keys will be on the ship um, at your, at the actual, um, at your actual stateroom now. And also for anyone that has been on a ship before that's had to do the muster 
drill and know how oh, how awful it is. They basically shut down the ship for the whole day. <laughs> I feel like it was the whole day. Um, you had to get your, you know, your light jackets and go up on deck and it's so hot. And now all this will be done through the app. So all you have to do is watch the muster drill on your app. And then when you get on the ship, you just go to your muster station, check in and you're done. Um, and then you continue on with the rest of the cruise. So it just really gives you um, back a full day. So in all of this craziness that's happened, there has been some really good things that have changed that has made um, just the efficiencies and everything on board so much easier. We do have the fastest internet at sea, um, and then I'll go through the rest of the stuff again in the presentation, and you'll see what I mean by um, the innovation on board. So some common ship features, and these are kind of, um, these are fleet-wide, these are across our ships. We have the, obviously the iconic rock wall, um, rock climbing wall. We have our theaters, our entertainment on board. Um, again, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Pools, whirlpools, we have kids clubs. Uh, the Windjammer Cafe buffet is the, um, is the buffet on all of our ships. We have our comedy clubs. The comedy clubs are probably one of my favorite things on our ships. The comedians on board are so funny. Um, and if you guys have ever been to comedians, you know, wherever in the cities that you live and you pay for like tickets for these, you can be paying a hundred dollars for a show and there's always two on there and they rotate their shows. Um, they, they're just, they're really funny. They're probably some of the best, um, comedians out there. We have our casino, obviously, and we also have conference centers in case you needed to conduct meetings and then our vitality, fitness and spa. So in terms of the entertainment on, on board, we have Broadway shows. Um, these are Tony Award winning Broadway shows. So we have, as you can see across the bottom here, we have different variety of Broadway shows depending on the ships that you're sailing on. But again, world-class um, theater shows on board. And in addition to the Broadway shows, we also have other theaters. Um, and again, every class of ship will be different. So this is the Oasis class ship. Uh, this is the back. It's the Aqua Theater. So again, we just have, there's, um, they make, they, it's, it's a show. It's all done. There's synchronized swimming. There's, you know, music. There's uh, tightrope rockers. There's high divers. And they literally um, dive off of the highest point there. You'll see the, the blue um, Royal Caribbean icon. They dive off just that little gate next to it. So super high. And the caliber of talent is next to none. Um, on our, the new Wonder of the Seas, we have five of the divers on board are former Olympians. Um, so the, yeah, the caliber of talent that we have on um, these people are, they're really, really good. And from what I've heard from the Wonder, it's just been, um, they've raved about these shows in the new Aqua Theatre. So this ship is uh, the Quantum class. So this is a little bit, this is what the back of the ship of the Quantum class looks like. So obviously a little bit different than the Oasis and that open air um, sort of feeling, but this theater is so cool. So this is what it looks like by day. So by day, so where you're kind of sitting right now would be a deli, so where you can get sandwiches and potato chips and that kind of thing. And you can go down, people are always reading books or just having coffee or talking or just looking at the window um, while we sail. So it's kind of a relaxation area. And then at night, it turns into this theater. It's crazy. It transforms so fast. Um, it's lights, the costumes. So when you're actually sitting in these lounges, you're sitting in those chairs. It's almost like you're, you feel like you're part of the theater. Um, people are running around you. They're coming out of the air. They're coming out of the ground. It's, it's crazy. Um, and so, and then all the windows turn into like just a massive video screen. So again, just a really, really neat concept. And then in terms of accommodations on our ships, again, standard, pretty much across the fleet, you know, you have your inside, your ocean view and your balcony staterooms, but we also have, um, on, depending on the class of ship, we have our boardwalk view balcony. So if you're on a ship where it has our promenade in the middle of it, you can actually get balcony rooms that overlook the inside of the ship. So if you want that sort of balcony feel, open air, um, but you don't care necessarily to be on the ocean side, um, you'd rather people watch, this, is a, this will be a perfect room for you. And then we have our interior with virtual balconies. So again, if you want to pay for an inside, but you you feel like you don't want to be you don't want to feel that claustrophobic, you want to have a sense of what's happening outside. Because I know the worst feeling in the world is when you wake up in the morning and you don't know if it's 9 a.m. or 2 p.m. because it's so dark in there. Um, this will allow you to at least see the outside of the of the ship. So there's a camera that actually is showing you what the outside of the ship. Um, what's going on out there. So if it's raining, it's going to be raining in your room. If it's dark, it's going to be dark. So again, just another option for you um, to choose from. 
<clears throat> and then we have our suites. Um, these suites, again, the range depending on their size. Um, there's lofts. We have, you know, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, uh, depending on what you're looking for. Our junior suites, our owner suite, our aqua theater suite. So people always ask what the best, where to sit in the aqua show. What's the best seat? This is the best seat in the house because it's right in your room. You go in on your balcony. It's a walk around balcony that overlooks that whole pool area. So again, um, definitely the best seats in the house in that one. The sky loft, um, and then we have our royal loft. The royal loft is great for if you wanted to entertain. Um, we have there's a dining table in there where you know it seats eight people. These rooms come. The royal loft um, will come with a royal genie, which is like a butler. So you could have dinner parties. So again, it's great for people maybe for weddings or you want to you know get together before the wedding or after the wedding rehearsals meetings. Um, if you wanted to host you had a meeting space. Uh, that one, that would be an example that why you would want to have that royal loft. There's a piano in there. There's a massive whirlpool on the patio. So great entertaining space. The ultimate family suite, I'm sure everyone's looking at watching this video as I talk, but um, this is the ultimate family suite. So this is, a, it's a, on the Wonder, the new Wonder has, it's three bedrooms. It'll sleep up to actually 10 people. And what we're finding right now trending is um, multi-generational travel. So, you know, grandparents going away with grandchildren, and I think it's just really popular this year because people have been just separated sometimes from their family for so long. So we're definitely seeing a trend there. So these rooms are fantastic for that. And a really cool story about this room was um, our former CEO, he, um, Richard Bain, he, he was on with his grandson, and they were in one of the suites, and he said, Grandpa, how come? It must have been the loft, because he's like, how come there's not a slide that takes me down from my bedroom to the living room? Um, and then sure enough, the new ships have this room now with a slide that literally takes you from the bedroom down to the living room. So fantastic for kids. Um, again, three bedrooms, sleeps 10 people. Uh, the only downfall to this is that there's only one on each of the ships. So if you want this room, you really need to book it far in advance. And then with our um, ship classes, currently we have six, the ICOM will be our seventh ship class. But again, we have tons of different ships depending on what you look for. Some people don't like the big, big ships. They want more of a small, intimate feel where, you know, you sort of get to know everybody on the ship and it's just easier to get around and they don't need all the, you know, the pools and the bells and whistles. Then you're going to be with, you're going to be the, the vision and the Voyager class, Radiance class. These are our smaller ships. Um, the Freedom Oasis and Quantum get into the sort of more medium and bigger ships. But again, it's going to dictate the ship that you go on is dictated almost by the itinerary that you're sailing on as well. Um, because obviously in Europe, getting into those smaller ports, we have to have a smaller ship there. Ships like the Quantum class, the Quantum class was built for cold weather. So these are the ships that will, you know, do uh, the Alaska runs um, and do more Northern Europe and that kind of thing. So again, depending on destination, um, that's going to kind of determine the ship that you do go on. And then within the six classes of ships, you can see we have tons. Um, I wish I could explain what's on every single one of these ships, but I can't. I, we literally would be here all night. So I'm going to pick and choose um, some of the different features on the different ships, but 26 ships in um, our fleet in total. And then for destination wise, we have tons of destinations. Um, obviously, North America and Europe being um, probably the most popular. You can see all of the um, names there. These will be our embarkation and our disembarkation ports. So this is where you would get on or get off the ship. And then I just wanted to point out in for some of the ships. So these are the ships that are older. These ones have all of these ships have been reamplified. So what does this mean? So reamplification doesn't just mean that we've, you know, painted a little some walls and we ripped it some carpet. We have legit legitimately made these ships new again. Um, you know, we've added new restaurants. We've moved things around to make the flow better. We've added massive water slides. Um, laser tag for kids. We've added different activities. Um, you know, we've just really we've taken the basically the best features off the bigger ships and we've put them onto these ships. So if you are thinking of, you know, like, for instance, you're like, oh, the Mariner of the Seas, it's an older ship. Sure, yeah, it's older and it's a smaller ship, but it's basically brand new because we've almost like completely gutted it and made it new again. And the main things that we do when we do these ramifications, we will, these are the three sort of sections that are the highlights. So we'll, you know, bars and nightlife, we'll add more bars, we'll take ones out or we'll just change them. 
dining venues, we usually add in more dining venues that have been popular across the other our other ships on the fleet. And we've, um, with the pool decks, we've made them double the size and we've added bars and things like water slides and that kind of thing to them. So in talking about one of the reamplified ships, we have for us West Coasters, um, this is a great option for you guys. Um, so the Navigator is sailing out of Los Angeles for the entire year. Um, it's stationed in Los Angeles. And some of the features on this ship, so again, for kids and families, this is great. Um, we have added two new water slides. So the first one is the Blaster. Um, I haven't been on it yet. I haven't been on the ship, but um, I've heard this, this slide is amazing. It's, it has um, sort of jets or it pumps out water as you're going down so it's you're going faster and faster and faster the whole way down um it's a tube one so one or two people can go down at one time and then we have the riptide so that's a forward facing mat racer um water slide and then the pool deck um again we've expanded it we've doubled the size that it was normally we've got a whirlpools you'll see the lime and the coconut uh, bar there you can try the signature cocktail it's the lime and coconut obviously the signature drink it comes in a pail with a straw and you can keep the pail as a souvenir if you want uh, but again just made it way bigger so you don't feel like you're you know there's a million people around you um that there's enough space and then just a picture of the lime and coconut bar again really cool area just to be around because they have live music playing all day and it's fun and then some of the restaurants that we've added on to this uh, put on the ship is the hooked seafood so a casual seafood restaurant we've added jamie's italian because jamie's italian is so popular across our fleet that um we've pretty much added it to all of our reamplified ships now and then of course we have starbucks and starbucks is on every every ship We've added the bamboo room. So this is a kind of a Polynesian tiki sort of style um, bar. So great for just, you know, after dinner cocktails, just hanging out, there's music and playmaker sports bar for all the sports fans out there. You don't want to miss a game. Um, I'm a huge NFL fan. So it's a really fun environment when there's a football game on. Um, it's, it's packed and they apparently serve, I'm not a chicken wing person, but apparently the chicken wings on here are really, really good. Uh, so again, just an area where there's tons of TVs, watch all the sports. It has any sports playing at all times. So have a beer and relax there. And then we have our ice skating shows. So again, like I was saying with the divers and the caliber of talent, um, in our ice skating shows, we had on the recent Olympics, we had a, a US figure, one of the US figure skaters that was um, skating in the, for US, Team USA actually started out skating on um, two of our, on our ships. So again, it just shows that the people on there are, are, are really, really good. And the shows are, are fantastic. And usually there's, you know, a couple different shows on the ship. So you're not going to be able to, you're not going to see the same shows over. And when they're not performing, you guys can actually go ice skating. Um, and they, and they also turn the ice skating rink into other things throughout the day as well. So it's a, it's a great space. And then for the itineraries for this navigator, um, we offer three, four, five, and seven night itineraries. So just uh, a couple of examples of the um, itineraries here. But I think that for us West Coasters, the, the three night is a really great option because it sails on a Friday, um, a Friday to a Monday. So if you just wanted a quick, if you never even have never been cruising before and you wanted to try it, or just even just wanted a quick, quick weekend getaway, this is great, especially if it actually falls over a long weekend, and like say for instance, the May long weekend, um, you only have to take one day off work. So there's a perk there, but there is obviously uh, other options. Um, so this is an example of our seven night itinerary. So we do more of Mexico um, rather than just sort of a cruise to Mexico and back. And the price point on these is really, really good as well. And then Alaska, so talking about Alaska, it's probably, it's songs, it's just crazy this year. Um, I think ships haven't been here in a few years and just, you know, it's easy for families to get to Vancouver or sail out of Canada. They feel, you feel comfortable, you're at home. So if anything happens, like you, you're not so far away. So Alaska is selling like crazy. So if any of you guys out there are interested in Alaska itineraries, um, book them for this summer sooner than later because they are they are going really, really fast. And there is some good prices on these cruises as well. So this is a picture of our quantum um, class, quantum or it's a quantum orivation. I'm not sure which one I can't tell, but it is a quantum class because it has that bubble, the North Star. So this is an observation um, sort of bubble that you go in and you go up and you can, you know, just it kind of rotates across the ship. Um, but just probably, again, one of the best views um, on the ship. 
for Alaska. And then this is um, uh, features on the quantum class ship. So these are, um, they have bumper cars. So this would be the sports plex by day and then bumper cars by night. We have the solarium. The solarium is an adults only area, really great area. Just if you want to relax, you know, listen to music, read a book. Um, you have the whirlpools, all the pools there. And then you can, of course, use our flow rider so you can see that you went surfing in Alaska because there's a picture of someone doing it. And then our robotic bartender um, in the bionic bar. So he, he's there. These are just fun. There's seats there. You can just sit him and watch him make drinks and it's fun. And then we have um, our simulated skydiving. So it's uh, another really great activity. I haven't done this yet. I wasn't able to do it the last time on the ship. I was so sad. Um, but all my coworkers did it and they said it was one, it's one of the best things to do for sure. If you don't really actually want to jump out of a plane, then this will be your <laughs> this will be your thing to go to. And then just in terms of activities in Alaska, there's so many. Um, you know, you can go. There's the fire here that's in Juneau. I actually did this. It's a salmon bake. So you do a salmon bake. There's you have a massive feast, and you can go um, panning for gold, and then you can ju just walk around. It's just it's just the wilderness. There's campfires. You roast marshmallows. Um, really cool. You can take a helicopter. You can go dog sledding. You can do tons of hiking, whale watching. The whale watching there is incredible. We went out, and the whale was probably. I felt he was like. I felt like he was two feet away. He was probably farther, but he like he breached, and I was yeah, I was a little scared, but. Um, again, tons of stuff to do in Alaska. And again, great for families. I think a lot of people think Alaska would be boring for families, but it's not. The kids absolutely love it. And we're seeing a lot of the um, kids actually sail this year to Alaska. So with the cruises that sail out of Alaska, we have four ships um, sailing in 2022 and in 2023. So if this year is not your year, 2023, we do have four as well. Um, the Serenade will be doing our world cruise. So the Enchantment will be coming to replace that. But the Radiance Ovation and Quantum will be here still. The Quantum and Ovation sail out of Seattle because these are our big ships. They can't obviously um, come under the Lionsgate Bridge in Vancouver. Um, and then we have the Radiance here um, doing one way. So they'll do a northbound or a southbound. This is the ship that you want to go on if you want to add on a cruise tour. So this would be our, our add-on land tours, our three, four night land tours after um, this, the Radiance is the best, the best ship for that. The Serenade, obviously very popular because it's a round trip Vancouver. So it saves a lot of people having to buy flights and things like that. Um, but again, that's um, it's, it's available in 2023 as well. And then the wonder of the sea. So I talked about the Navigator. Now I'm going to talk about the Wonders. This is our big, brand new ship. Um, it just came to Florida in March. So really, like, legitimately brand new. Um, it's sailing out of Fort Lauderdale right now. Um, from people that have sailed on it, it they say it's just unbelievable. Um, they they can, they say they can't even describe it because it's just it's so overwhelming. Uh, but it's it's an Oasis class ship, so very similar to the Symphony or the Harmony or an Oasis. Um, but again, they were just saying that the flow of it's way better, they, the design's a lot better, they've changed some things, and I'll talk about that in a bit, but this, it will be going back in May, it'll be actually going back to Europe and sailing, um, and then it will come back in the fall to do winter in 2023, and it will be sailing out of Port Canaveral, Orlando. So if any of you guys out there are familiar with the Oasis class ships, these ships are so big that we actually have, um, we have to divide them, we, we call them neighborhoods, and we basically divide it up because, um, you know, we have Central Park, which is kind of like Central Park in New York. Um, it's it's my favorite area on the ship, just it, it actually feels like you're sitting in a park, and when it's raining outside, it's raining on you, so there's umbrellas that you can they that they give you and stuff it's really neat um and then there's obviously the car carousel for the boardwalk area it's kind of like that santa monica pier feel with like candy floss and candy and cool things like that but new to the wonder is this new eighth neighborhood and it's our oh, it's our sweet neighborhood so this is for sweet guests only for sweet guests it's it's a vip sort of exclusive um area again you'll see people here um there's a like that what private plunge pool they have a bar they have um, some, some more pictures of it just the lounge chairs the amount of space on here though for the actual sweet guests that are on board it's it's square footage per person it's huge so you said that the teeny was telling us the other day that she is she feels like she never sees anyone on there um there might be someone sitting there and then someone way on the other side so she said it's again it's never crowded it's just just a great area for these sweet, sweet guests so no one else on the ship can get in, but you have access obviously to this area and then the whole everything else on on the ship. They also have Coastal Kitchen would be an exclusive restaurant just for this class. 
And then Wonder Playscape, they've added, they, what they did was on the other Oasis class ships, they had two flow riders on the back of the ship. They've taken one of the flow riders out and they've um, put this Wonder Playscape in. And what it is, it's kind of like a underwater, underwater themed sort of area for kids to play in. They can go through like caves and tunnels and it actually feels like they're under the water. It's like a 3D sort of um, movie sort of thing in there, slides. And they wanted to create more activities that more people could use um because the flow rider obviously one or two people at a time so it just it was just better use of the space um and then right next to it will be the wonder dunes which would be the uh, mini golf and then just a picture of our pool area you'll see the one pool on the left and one pool on the right and then in the middle is would be the middle of the ship so that would be where you kind of look over um into the boardwalk area so again, just you can see there's tons of space there for relaxing. And then the view bar, this is brand new to the Oasis class ship. Um, another really neat story about this. Uh, so when they actually were doing the shipbuilding and design of this, of this wonder, um, this was actually supposed to be a massive infinity pool, this whole area, back, like a pool at the back of the ship. Um, and the engineers were like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's like, that has way too many pools, um, whirlpools and stuff already on board that the water weight restrictions were too high that they actually wouldn't allow the infinity pool on here. So they were like, what are we gonna do with this space? So they created this really cool bar, but again, it's at the back of the ship. Um, again, just a really neat place to go and have a cocktail before or after dinner um, and just hang out. And then the mason jar, again, a new concept to um, our Oasis class ships. It's a Southern style restaurant. And I'm just gonna show you some food here. And hopefully all of you guys are have eaten dinner because otherwise you're gonna be starving. Just looking at these pictures, my mouth's watering. Um, so the fried chicken and waffles, uh, we have the Nashville hot crispy chicken sandwich. And there's been huge debates. Um, if all, like all of our CEOs and you know head office people saying it's, that is it the best chicken sandwich out there? Because that's what we heard. And people are like, 100% is the best chicken sandwich out there compared to any fast food chicken in um, the US, Canada, you name it. Um, so I'm just itching to get on to try this to see for myself, to see if it actually is <laughs> the best hot crispy chicken sandwich out there. We have uh, cool drinks, bourbon milkshake. There's also a drink you can get. It's a, a peanut butter old fashioned. So it comes with a side of peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So just a really cool, um, interesting concept restaurant that's new to us. And then we have our social 100 and patio, again, brand new to um, teenagers. The, this is just for teenagers. And rumor has it, there's even a secret tunnel or a secret passage that only teens can go through, adults aren't allowed. So this is the teens only, adults aren't allowed here. Um, they have to go back to the solarium. But again, a neat place for all the teens like to get together, meet new friends on the ship. Um, if you have teenagers and they go here, they probably you probably never see them again. They even have a bar tender there serving um, sort of mocktails for them. So again, they would absolutely love this area. And then when the wonder does leave us and it goes back to Europe for the summer, it will be doing these ports. Um, starting in May. Uh, so again, a great option for families because obviously the wonder itself is a destination for kids. It's great because you can go back on the ship. They're not going to be like, oh, I'm so bored. Um, Europe's not like, you know, Europe and kids, like it doesn't seem like they fit, but going like be able to go back on the ship when there's tons of activities to do, but just also being able to, you know, have that cultural, that historical experience with them. Um, again, another big trending, uh, sort of that learning family, they're taking, people are taking kids away to Europe. And for families to go to Europe, especially on a cruise, it's fantastic because if you've ever tried to get a hotel room for um, a fourth person in Europe, it's almost impossible. <laughs> I feel like they cut it off at, um, you know, person three. So, and again, just in terms of like the cost, the food, everything in Europe is expensive. So it's a very inexpensive way to travel um, with families. And then Coco Cay is our private island. Um, so I'm just going to go really quickly kind of through this, but this island is amazing i have been um i went in november and December. i've been there six times to this island and i can honestly say i i still have there's so much of it that i haven't even seen or experienced yet um every time i go there's not like i'm like oh i have to go back there again i love going here um so when you get up on the pier when you're walking down the pier and you get to the island you can go left where it's the perfect day sign is and that's sort of more our chill area if you turn right, this is our thrill area. So it's chill or thrill, um, depending on what you want. So more of the beaches, um, the swim up bars, the Oasis Lagoon, that will be to the left. And then 
to the right will be all of our the water slide, the water park area, the wave pool, zip lining. Um, up, up and away, which is our hot air balloon that goes 450 feet up in the air. We have our splash pad. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just tons of stuff to do there. And then sort of at the back where the Coco, Coco Cay Beach Club is, um, I think I have, these are just the picture of the pool and the cabana. Um, the swim up bar, and it actually does look like this. It's never crowded. It's obviously, it's so big um, that people, I mean, the swim up bar gets a little crowded, but um, the pool itself, you could just literally do laps <laughs> around there. It's so big. So this is Coco Cay Beach Club. This is um, an area that you actually would have to pay. There's a fee to get in. I think it's around 99 US dollars. Um, you can get discounts when they come up on this. Um, but you get you get a floaty, you get a floaty that you can go in the ocean with. You get an all-inclusive lunch, um, which is not just like hamburgers and hot dogs. It's lobster and steak, surf and turf. Um, it's, it, it's really, really good. Uh, they have the infinity pool here. You can also see the overwater bungalows. The overwater bungalows are an additional charge. But they're great to rent if you did have a whole bunch of people going, you know, there's eight or 10 of you, um, it, would, it would just be a great thing to rent, you know, you can divide it up and just spend the day there. It's, I think I have some more pictures of it coming up too. Here's a closer image of the restaurant area and then the infinity pool. And again, like I said, I've been here five or six times and every time I go this area, is, it's never been busy. It's, it, it's really, and I, I mean, that's one of the reasons that we have to charge because we want to make sure that we don't have 8,000 people because when we, if we have two massive ships in, there could literally be 8,000 people um, on the island at one time. So we don't need 8,000 people in this in this pool. Um, and a picture of the overwater cabana. So there's a slide, you can't see it, to, but to the right, there's one of those hammocks that lays over the water. There's to the left of the couch here, there's a change area. Um, they have hookups for like Wi-Fi and laptop, you can play music. The fridge is fully stocked. There's a, a safe um, actually in the table. You can see the little code thing there. So if you wanted to lock your valuables in and leave and go to the pool or, or get lunch but if you're in the cabana there's actually someone that what well, you just order lunch and the guy guy comes down on it. it's almost like a skip the dishes and he rides his bike down with with the cooler and brings you your um surf and turf and delivers it and warm cookies in the afternoon as well so again just a really neat area and then other pictures of the cabanas that you can rent um, around the island there's it, there's different cabanas in different areas and they all charge different rates depending on where you get them. Um, but for the Thrill Water Park, for instance, for the Thrill Water Park, you actually have, there is a fee to go into it. But for a cabana, you, you when you rent the cabana, you get six passes included with that cabana rental. Um, so it is very, it's a really great value. Again, if you have multi-generational family where maybe the grandparents just wanna relax and the kids wanna obviously go on the water slides, it's a, it's a great option. So these are the things that there will be fees for um, on the island. Again, we can't have 8,000 people using all of these things at once. So we need to make sure that we um, there's capacity limitations. So again, throw water park, um, we have the zip lining there and then we have the up, up and away balloon, hot air balloon. The wave pool that's within throw water park. I have yet to try that. So that maybe next to my list. And then this adventure pool for kids. They love it. There's so many activities. And then Splash Summit, this was my favorite water slide. It's called the Slingshot. So you basically come down that, um, that slide and you don't know if you're gonna come down frontwards or backwards because you're spinning the whole way down this big water slide. Um, I went on it six times and every single time I went down backwards. I'm like, <laughs> I don't get it, um, but it's so scary, but it's, it's super, it's lots of fun. And then we have the zip line and you wanna make sure that you wanna go on the one zip line either on the, on the either sides because if you go in the middle, you're gonna get sprayed by that, um, that water cannon <laughs> that shoots up. And then Splash Away Bay, so this would be more for um, like toddler, toddlers and younger kids. This is complimentary. So if you do get off the ship and obviously you don't want to, you know, you have smaller kids that can't go on the water slides and such, they do have an area that you don't have to pay um, to get in. And then we have various grills around um, the island. We have a snack shack that's complimentary. Um, they make funnel cake and they drizzle it with like caramel sauce. And so when you're on the island, you can just smell the funnel cake everywhere. It's it's really, really good. And then we have, um, and then this is Labadee. So moving on to our other private island in Haiti. This is very different from Perfect Day. Um, it's more lush, tropical, mountainous. It doesn't have, you know, all the water slides and the, that sort of, that adventure thrill part of it. Um, obviously it does have the thrill. It has this massive zip line and there is water sports that you can, you know, and more kayaking, um, more beach hikes and that kind of thing. So it's just a completely different experience. You can go parasailing. 
but you can see even the landscape, it looks completely different. There's this dragon's tail roller coaster. So it's a roller coaster that goes through um, sort of the mountains and the trees and stuff. And then of course, if you just wanna relax and run a cabana, you have that option as well. And then I'm just gonna point out some itineraries uh, that the reason I chose these itineraries is because these will touch both, they will go to both private islands um, as well as other ports too. But I don't know if you want to take this screenshot or whatever, but it's um, again, they just, they go to Labadee and they will also go to Perfect Day. Again, price points on these really, really good um, all season long. A lot of the ships will go to either one of the private islands. Perfect Day pretty much, I swear every ship goes to. Um, so you have a ton of, op there is a ton of options out there. And then some new deployment that just came out for us. Anyone interested in Canada, New England sailings, so those, you know, those fall foliage sailings, um, itineraries that go, you know, start in New York and then they go up and they end in Quebec City. And they actually, at the end of the itinerary, they do an overnight in Quebec City. So you're on the ship uh, for one night overnight. Um, this Greenland cruise, I just stuck it up there because I just think it's a cool sort of a bucket list thing. Um, people that want to, you know, go to Greenland, just Greenland. You can see the ship at least from New York. And it does, um, it does some overnights. And it, I think you're there in Green, you're actually in Greenland for three, three or four days. And then you do Halifax, St. John's, New York. And again, really great starting point. It is a bit longer. It is a two-week cruise. But again, if you just wanted to do Greenland, then that's a great option. And then Europe. Um, Europe seasons are right around the corner. Again, it's looking like crazy right now. We're seeing it's it's funny, um, just after COVID, we're seeing a lot of last minute bookings. Um, I was saying to the guys just before this, like I had a person that called me and said, I need to go on a cruise and I'm leave, I want to leave in six days. So I was scrambling today to try to find something. Um, but Europe, we're seeing tons of bookings coming in for Europe. It's a picture of Barcelona in the church. And like I said, Europe for families, um, it's great because it's inexpensive. You're, you see a bunch of different places, um, but it's easy to travel when you have kids um, in Europe by cruise because it's just you know, not having to go out to restaurants and the logistical nightmare of like taking public transit, transit and stuff like that is just, it's easy. So again, and only having to unpack once, that's a huge bonus. And again, we have tons of itineraries to choose from depending on what part of Europe you want to see. So these are some of the ships. These are 2022. So these are sailings this summer, but this, they almost mimic what will be happening in 2023 as well. Um, there is slight changes in 2023 itineraries, but for the most part, they will be the same. You know, we sail out of Rome and Barcelona being one of our, like our, top, like our, one of our top ports. We do Southampton, we do Venice, Amsterdam, we do the Northern Copenhagen, um, Stockholm as well. So, and again, small, medium, large ships, you have your, you have your pick. So Mediterranean, obviously these are some of the best islands, um, you know, the Santorini, Greece, Croatia, I just can't rave enough about. Um, and then just some example itineraries here. So the eight night Western Mediterranean on the vision, October 27th departure. You have to have a look at this one. The price point is so good. This is one of our most popular selling cruises right now. Um, for me anyway, I just see this one coming through all the time being booked, booked, booked. So again, um, great itinerary, very port intensive. We have our seven night Greek um, island cruise. This one's in 2020, fall of 2023. So this is a bit longer way away, but this itinerary, I just went here because I absolutely love this itinerary. The Amalfi Coast, if you haven't been, you have to go. It's the most picturesque area in Italy. Um, it also goes to Santorini and Mykonos, probably the two most iconic uh, islands in Greece. And then Ephesus, Turkey. Um, the cool thing about this itinerary, it's called an open jaw and it's because it starts in Rome and it ends in Athens. So these are great itineraries. Again, people are like, oh, I can't go to um, Europe, you know, just for seven nights. I need to, they, it gives you a great option to extend. You know, you do three nights um, pre in Rome and then you do three nights post in Athens and fly home for, from there. But it just makes the experience a little bit longer. Um, you get to see more. So these, the open jaw itineraries are my favorite. I do them every single year with my mom um, because we love that pre and post option. And then just some examples of back-to-back -back cruising, because I think a lot of people forget about these, that you do have an option. So seven nights, yeah, it might be too far to go for Europe, but you can add a seven night plus a four night plus another seven night if you want to, um, you know, expand it out. So again, and this one I chose, and you'll see there's a lot of repeat islands. So you do the seven night at the beginning, you do the seven night at the end, and they do Mykonos, and you do Santorini again, and you do, there's definitely some overlaps. 
However, people always stay on cruise ships that one day in a place is just not enough. And one day in these places is not enough. So by doing these back-to-backs, you actually get to go back and experience, um, experience it again within the same week. <laughs> You're not having to fly back to Europe. So again, another great option. Um, two different ships that you could try, the Brilliance and the Rhapsody. The only issue with this one is that you would have to, because it doesn't overlap exactly July 31st, it would get into Venice. It doesn't leave Venice until, or um, yeah, it doesn't leave Venice until August 1st. You would have to um, overnight in, in Venice. But again, if you've ever been to Venice, it's one of the best places um, just to walk around and stuff. So you would really appreciate having that one night. And then Holy Land Cruises, again, popular. Um, what I love about the um, Holy Land cruise that we have is that it sails on the Odyssey. This is Odyssey is the biggest one of our big big ships. Um, Odyssey is my personal favorite ship in the fleet. Um, I was on it in November when it first the inaugural sailing, and I just was blown away. I loved it so much. Um, but anyways, it great. Uh, itinerary on this too and it, this one overnights in um, Haifa it also there's other variations if you want different dates but there is one that overnights in Jerusalem um, as well and in 20, 2023 I think they almost all night overnight in Jerusalem but you can see stunning stunning itinerary and again price point really really good and then northern Europe so northern Europe again a lot, a lot of people, like a lot of bucket lists, like I'm going to do it one day. This is the year that people are doing it, I find. Um, again, you can do these separately. I just put up three sample itineraries here, British Isles, the Arctic Circle, and Iceland. Um, so again, you can book them separately. Or if you wanted to expand it into a 36-night itinerary, or actually there was two more on it. I obviously couldn't put them on the slide. They wouldn't fit. There is two more, and I think they go down to like Spain and Portugal. You can actually make it into a 55-night if you really wanted to. Uh, you can see the June 8th, the dates line up perfectly on that one. And I don't think there's, I think, I don't think there's any overlap to night ports on this one. You can see it's very, very port intensive. So you're going to need a vacation when you come back from this vacation. Uh, but overnight in Dublin and two overnights in Iceland. So again, more um, intense land time that you get with these itineraries. And then Ultimate World Cruise. I think everyone out there should book this Ultimate World Cruise. Um, it actually is 85% sold out, so you might not be able to. Um, however, it is a 274 night cruise. Um, our expeditions, I've just put them up here on the top. It is divided, we call them expeditions, but they're like segments of the world cruise. So you may only wanna do a 60 night or, a six, or an 80 night or just a certain depth section of the world that you haven't experienced before. Uh, there's 57 ports on this itinerary that Royal Caribbean normally never goes to. Um, so just for that option alone, it's very popular. The World Cruise and the segments do come with a lot of inclusions. You know, there is included excursions, there's included drinks and gratuities and laundry. Um, so the value of it is, um, it's really good. If you break it down what you spend per month, it's you're like, wow, I spend that way more than that just living here. So um, again, another option. If you have the time, I wish I had the time, but I don't. But if you do have the time, that is, it is a great cruise. And then we're getting to the end of our presentation, but March promotions, um, Mar we have so many promotions. We have our 30% off um, automatic. And then if you do book a 2022 sailing, you automatically will get $150 off. If you're holding any future cruise credits out there and redeem them, you get $100 on board credit. Uh, we have our Crown and Anchor. So for our um, Crown and Anchor members out there, you can earn up to another $50 on board credit and they're all combinable. And then just announced today, um, March 24th to 28th, we do have our kids sail free. So here's that option. You can take your kids away to Europe. So any sailings um, after June until April of 2023, so tons of times, uh, kids 12 and under sailing will sail for free. Um, there is exclusions, obviously, to holidays um, like spring break and Christmas and things, but there is um, still a, a lot of time uh, to take advantage of, especially this summer. And that's all I have. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'll give it back to Randy. Actually, all right. Well, Leanne, thank you. Okay, what comes to my mind is creative, innovative, unbelievable, um, definitely not boring. Whether <laughs> no. it's you know whether it's the entertainment or the accommodation, I, I think Royal Caribbean is fabulous. And the other thing I think I want to mention, and you talked about it a little bit, is the fact that. You know, we, we've all kind of missed out in terms of travel. And I think what many Lisa, of us... Have Lisa, Lisa, I'm going to interrupt. 
Okay. Um, can you switch to your other screen? Because we can't see your face. Your your um. There we okay. go. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, what I thank you, Randy. I think what we've all missed is being with friends and family. And what strikes me about Royal Caribbean that I've experienced myself is multi generational. Absolutely everybody, every age from small kids to teenagers to adults to grandparents would love it. So that's something to keep in mind. So there are a few questions that uh, have come up. So I'm going to throw them out to you, Leanne. And let me just, uh, all right. Um, a couple questions. Uh, Broadway shows currently operating on the Oasis. Are they operating? Are, are, are all the shows operating? The shows. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, can you give us a little bit of information? All of us are very concerned about investment and uncertainty still. Change and cancellation policies. So right now, so we still have our cruise with confidence. So this means that you can book anything booked up until May 31st. Again, it might be extended on later, but right now it's until May 31st. Um, you will be covered under the cruise of confidence, which means that you can cancel within up to 48 hours and receive a future cruise credit or move to a, a future date if you don't feel comfortable. And you can literally cancel for any reason. Like it's it's very, very flexible. Okay. So you don't have to feel like you're locked in for taking your money. No, we will definitely find you another vacation. <laughs> And I think that's really important. None of us want to lose out at this point. Yeah. Some, something on many people's mind, you know, we're all filling up the car with gas and finding the pricing is high. Will there be a fuel surcharge because of the high cost of oil implemented in some of the cruises now? Yeah, they, we, they, people, have, but we've been getting that question a lot. Um, and they're very, right now, Royal Caribbean's confident that we're not changing that. Okay. Um, so I would say, yeah, it, I mean, obviously anything can change, but it's there. They, they don't want to like it. Believe me. It's just like, no, we're not doing that because it's not. Yeah. <laughs> that's one. Not that's fair. wonderful to hear. <laughs> you, you talked about lots of last minute sailings. And I think there are people that really want to get away over the next few weeks or next few months. Is there a lot of space still left? Uh, for Alaska, for Caribbean, for the Navigator out of Los Angeles? Out of Los Angeles, yeah, for sure. Um, the three three nights and four nights, there's tons of space. The seven nights is filling up. It's getting, it's it's a lot more popular, um, but definitely a lot. Yeah, no, there's still tons of space on it, especially the three and four nights and good, really good, really good prices. All right. Uh, comment from Liz and Dave Boyston, who are currently on the audio Odyssey of the Seas watching this virtual event. So obviously, <laughs> obviously, Wi-Fi is very, very good. It is. Uh, the fastest, right. internet, fastest internet at sea. So it, yeah, you can you can literally go and work on a ship for a week and your boss wouldn't even know. <laughs> Not okay. anyone's mind, but that's a good that, that's a good thing. Maybe Randy won't know that I'm missing. Uh, yeah. Couple couple questions about the kids programs. Are the kids programs operating right now? And are children do children need to be vaccinated? So children twelve and above need to be vaccinated. Um, it's highly suggestive that kids do get vaccinated five and above. Um, we're not requiring them to be vaccinated. Uh, but yeah, it's it, we obviously recommend it. Um, and then the kids clubs are fully operating. They do do extra precautions. You know, when the kids come, go in, they clean their shoes, they spray everything down. Um, social distancing, it's it's still in effect. They need to kids that kids that are on board that aren't vaccinated, they still are required to wear masks. Okay. Um, they have released or re released um, lifted the sort of restriction where you need to go with an excursion if you have unvaccinated kids, because before you needed to travel with a Royal Caribbean excursion, that's no longer, there is certain ports it does still apply to, but for the most part, you can get off the ship now and just enjoy the port on your own. Okay, all right. And just uh, one last question in terms of deposit amounts. If I wanted, if somebody wanted to book a cruise right now, what, what would they need to deposit? It, it, will, it will depend on the length of the cruise. Um, for a seven-night cruise, I believe it's $250 per person. Okay. 
All right. Deposit. But it will depend if it's a three, four, seven, twelve. Like there's different deposits, but that's the average. Okay. Uh, just going to go back a little bit in terms, you mentioned masks. for. So what, what, what are the kind of rules right now? If somebody wants to go on a cruise, what are the general rules and protocols that they have to be aware of? So masks, you don't need to wear masks anymore. Um, I know so, a lot of people still will, especially if you're in a confined area, like an elevator or just a confined space, maybe in one of the shops or something, people are still wearing them, but it's not mandatory. You're not going to get in trouble um, if you aren't. Uh, because 95% of the people on board right now are are vaccinated. Uh, it, it would just be that small percentage of kids that, that aren't. Um, it's completely, the ships are completely open now. Um, before it was very segregated. Dining rooms were split into unvaccinated and non-vaccinated. The theaters, you had to reserve vaccinated or not vaccinated. It's completely nor as normal as per normal now. Um, so it, it has really gone. I mean, I was on in November and December when all the protocols were very strict and I didn't find it to be annoying or an issue at all. Like you just, you just enjoyed it and you just, you just dealt with the mask. Like it, it was fine. So now that that, that is actually all lifted, it's just, it's going to be a normal experience for most people, which we've all been, really, we've been waiting for, but the cleaning, they're cleaning, you see them cleaning all the time. Um, your staterooms are constantly being cleaned. Um, it's just the sanitation, the filter, the filtration air. I think it gets filtrated every 12 times a day. Okay. Um, clean air into your, into your room and throughout the, throughout the space. So, um, no, it's cruising as usual, but very, very safe. Very, very Good. safe. That's excellent. So there is some short term notice. You also have bookings open till into 2023, which is exciting. And just want to let 2024. <laughs> okay. I just want to let everybody know at Expedia Cruises, we block hundreds, hundreds of dates where we have Expedia exclusive stateroom amenities as well as rates that are way below some of the published rates that you'd find if you were booking with Royal Caribbean uh, directly. I love the kids fly or the kids sail free uh, program. That promotion is absolutely fabulous. And with the dollars off right now, uh, cap and also for uh, Crown and Anchor, the extra shipboard credit, you can't really lose. <laughs> You know, uh, and and the deposits are refundable or future travel credits if it's closer in anything. So I think we've pretty well covered and hopefully we've excited everybody. Uh, cruising has started uh, and truly, uh, as you say, up until 2024. So there is no sin in planning for 2022, planning for 2023, planning for 2024, because we've all lost two years of vacations and I can tell you for one I have lots to make up for so I want to thank everybody for joining us thank you for your time thank you for your past travels with us we look forward to having your future travels in our trusty hands to take care of you please reach out to your Expedia Cruises consultants if you have any questions and let us start planning your next vacation reminder to follow us on Facebook check out also our YouTube channel where this and all our other, other video presentations are recorded. And in two weeks, we will meet again for our Thursday night travel talk with scenic cruises featuring Europe and exotic destinations. So thank you to everybody. Thank you, Leanne, for exciting us and making, and making us want to get on a ship. And everybody <laughs> have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot.